In March 1921, the Isu Opera Troupe arrived in Hankou, the gateway to the provinces of southern China. Qinqiang Opera had broken out of its northwestern homeland and was about to take its place on the national stage. They were at the Hankou Theatre to showcase a new opera, one that would make the name of the Yusu Opera Troupe and come to be regarded as a classic. Three Drops of Blood. For local theatre-goers, the Yisu Opera Troupe offered something completely new. An opera full of strange, discordant tunes that recalled the wild desolation of the Los Plateau of the Northwest, a world away from the mists and rains of the South. One man in particular was blown away by the Yisu Opera Troupe's performance. Ouyang Yuqian, a man who would go down in history as one of the greatest exponents of Chinese opera. Back then, as the drama unfolded before him on the Hankou stage, he was just beginning his brilliant career. It was a performance that he would remember for the rest of his life. Many years later, he recalled that night at the Hankou Theatre in his memoirs. The cast was full of amazing performers, but Liu Jensu's performance was truly outstanding. I don't think there was a single opera performer in the North who had anything like the talent he had. among its supporters, the brilliant writer Lu Xun. By 1924, word of the troupe had reached Beijing. When Lu Xun arrived hot and exhausted in Xi'an in July that year, there was only one thought on his mind, to get to the Yisu Theatre. That night, the troupe was performing two embroidered dresses, with Liu Jinsu in the starring role. For Liu Xun, it was opera as he'd never seen it before. The rhythm and pace of the opera, even the cadences of the drums and gongs, were for him something entirely new, something revolutionary. But the spirit of the troupe also struck a chord with him. Like him, these were artists determined to bring about enlightenment and social change. He called on the troupe again while he was in Xi'an and wrote this dedication to them. It expressed his belief that the troupe were pioneers. Nobody was doing what they were doing. Tingwa In a bizarre twist of fate, just as the Isu Opera Troupe was getting the recognition it deserved, disaster struck. It came in summer, 1924, during a performance of Beauty Changes Horse. Incredibly, the last time 23-year-old Liu Jensu would take to the stage.
In a sense, it is perhaps fitting that Liu Jensu's life ended where it did, on the stage. He was a consummate performer. His art, Qinqiang Opera, meant everything to him. The Isu Opera Troupe was literally his life an institution that allowed him to pursue his chosen path and which had nurtured him since the age of 10 and made him into a star by the age of 18. So, despite his youth, it's possible that he died without regrets, confident that he'd followed his star. There were no regrets when his heart gave out on that stage. He literally spent his life doing what he'd been born to do. Sadly, the passing of Liu Jensu was just the beginning of a run of bad luck for the troop. In July 1926, the Northern Expedition, a campaign aimed at destroying the power of the Northern warlords and bringing the whole country under the control of the Nanjing government, began. The expedition got off to a good start, but ran into trouble when the expeditionary force reached Xi'an and was besieged by a hundred thousand troops, commanded by the warlord Liu Zhenhua. The desperate defense of the city, led by Yang Hucheng and Li Hucheng, saved the Northwest. They'd averted disaster, but it was clearer than ever that the country was teetering on the edge of catastrophe. So too was the Yisu Opera Troupe. With the city in turmoil, audiences shrank and revenues fell. Many members of the troupe were lost as management cut back on expenses in an effort to keep afloat. Yet the core remained intact, clinging to the ideals that had brought the troop into existence. Ideals that kept it together through the hard years ahead. This is a billboard advertising a 1926 Yisu Opera Troupe performance called Destiny in a Cabinet. <laughs> Destiny in a Cabinet was a source of very real spiritual comfort for the suffering people of Xi'an. It was a distraction from the problems of everyday life and a source of inspiration. It reminded them that better times were around the corner. All they had to do was hold on. And the Yisu Opera Troupe was also setting an example. The performers were hungry, just like everyone else in the city. But for them, the show went on, whatever the discomforts, whatever the risks. The troupe had shown that they had their finger on the pulse of the nation, and not for the last time. They were about to play their part in a drama that was unfolding far away from the Xi'an stage in China's northeastern provinces. On September the 18th, 1931, the Muk Den incident took place. Overnight, the Japanese army seized control of China's three northeastern provinces.
With 30 million Northeasterners now under foreign rule, the danger that the country faced was plain for all to see. The role of the Yisu Opera Troupe. It had been founded to promote the new ideas that Sun and Lee would help reinvigorate the country. With more than 30 million Northeasterners now under foreign rule and the country facing disintegration, it was now more urgent than ever for the troop to stay true to its patriotic ideals and to rally people around the cause of resistance to Japanese domination. Feng Zhimua, a graduate of National Art School in Beiping, was to play a key role in defining the troops' mission in the turbulent years that were to come. Uh, 在课程上增加了戏剧学、心理学等艺术学科，这在传统秦腔教育方面是不可想象的。Feng Zhimou was also a writer. One of his operas, *The Battered Country*, summed up the challenges and dilemmas faced by Chinese patriots up and down the country. It was radical, a daring piece of theatre, far removed from the traditional Qingqiang opera. However, it touched a chord and left audiences in no doubt that the country was in mortal danger. But critically, true to the educational ideals of the founders of the Yisu opera troupe, it asked questions of the audience. What could ordinary Chinese men and women do to avert the coming catastrophe? At least one man's conscience was pricked by the battered country, General Zhang Xueliang. For Zhang Xueliang, the new posting was problematic. He was being moved away from his native northeast, now under foreign occupation, to take up arms against his fellow countrymen. However unpleasant the bandits were, and however important it was to suppress them, resistance to the Japanese seemed to him to be the priority. His conscience in turmoil, he turned to his sworn brother and commander in chief, Chiang Kai shek, for an answer. However, any hopes that Chiang Kai shek would put resistance to the Japanese at the top of his agenda were dashed when the two men met on December the 4th, 1936.
December the 11th, 1936. For the next three days, the Isu Opera Troupe would play to packed houses. On the opening night, the guest of honor was General Yang Hu Cheng, and the audience was full of senior officials from Chiang Kai-shek's Shanxi entourage. Although some in the audience were transfixed by events on the stage, other minds were wandering. Storm clouds were gathering. A distant rumble of the approaching storm couldn't be drowned out by the high-pitched singing of the performers on stage forever. The storm broke on December the 12th, 1936, an event that would come to be known in Chinese history as the Xi'an Incident. At last, Jiang Xueliang and Yang Hucheng, frustrated at Chiang Kai-shek's refusal to confront the Japanese, took matters into their own hands. Chiang was taken hostage and forced to make the struggle against the Japanese his top priority. So it was that while this extraordinary troupe was performing on stage, a real-life drama was unfolding off stage. The Isu Opera troupe also had its own role to play in this drama. As the will to resist the Japanese intensified in the wake of the Xi'an incident, the Yisu Opera Troupe found that its patriotic brand of traditional Chinese opera captured the public mood. Over the next few years, the troupe would play to packed houses up and down the country. In May 1937, General Song Zhuyuan invited the troupe to Beijing to perform The Battered Country and a new show called Restore Our Lost Land. But though they went down a storm with Song's troops, many of whom were Northwesterners familiar with the discordant notes of their native Qinxiang opera, others were less enthusiastic. For these critics, the Yisu Opera Troupe had strayed too far from the traditions of Chinese opera. For them, the shrillness of the vocal style of this radical form of Qinxiang opera was too much. Fong Zhimor hit back against the critics in an article. For him, the style of operas was the perfect vehicle for the message that the Yisu Opera Troupe wanted to get across. China was being torn apart. The shrill sounds made by the Yisu Opera Troupe were screams of pain, the only appropriate response from the people of a country in the process of being battered to death. Regardless of the critics, Recover Our Lost Land continued running in Beijing. But the Japanese were moving ever closer to the city. All-out war with Japan was imminent. The patriotic message of the troop was about to become more relevant than ever before.
gunshots on the Marco Polo Bridge on July the 7th, 1937, heralded a massive Japanese invasion. Japanese troops from the already occupied Northeast moved south and took Beijing. For the next eight years, China would be fighting for its very existence. So too would the Yisu Opera troupe. Although its patriotic message of resistance and courage in the face of adversity would be needed more than ever, the scale of fighting and the depth of the suffering endured during the war years would strain the troop to its very limits. The Yisu Opera Troupe has had its ups and downs over the years. It's been through good times and times when it seemed impossible to carry on. How has the Yisu Opera Troupe weathered the storms and come through the other side? How has it kept singing in the rain? Join us for the next part of the Yisu Opera Troupe.